It's Wednesday, December 13th, 2023, and I'm Dave Sobel. Four things to know today. AI, a leveler or divider in white collar work, artificial or actual, Presto Automation's heavy reliance on human labor is exposed, inside OpenAI, the controversy and consequences of Sam Altman's leadership style, and MSP360 leverages self-service. This is the business of tech. A new sponsor to the podcast, and I'm excited to have them. Skycake has been a global MSP-focused business for more than 10 years. Their products automate and simplify your cloud operations. Whenever you migrate, manage, or protect your Microsoft 365 users, Skycake is there for you with powerful automation to reduce your workload. I know that their focus for the last few years has been on Microsoft 365 security for your customers. Check them out now to get ahead on security with intelligent customer protection to get approximately $30 more in MRR from every user you have under your Microsoft 365 MSP. Visit skykick.com slash MSP radio to learn more. AI primarily benefits high-performing employees while providing little aid to low-performing ones, according to a series of studies. AI was observed to narrow the gap between high and low performers equalizing white-collar work. Studies show that AI tools impact workers differently depending on their skill level. In creative writing and office memos, AI helped low performers improve but had little effect on those already skilled. In coding, less experienced engineers benefited more from AI assistance. In management consulting, AI boosted the scores of low performers more than high performers. In law school, AI helped lower-ranking students but hurt top performers. In call center work, AI improved productivity for novice workers, but had little benefit for experienced workers and even hindered top performers in some cases. Microsoft has announced a new agreement with the AFL-CIO, the largest federation of unions in the U.S., to address concerns about the impact of AI on American workers and facilitate unionization at Microsoft. The agreement includes a neutrality framework that supports employees' rights to form or join unions and negotiate collective bargaining agreements. AI has become a contentious issue in labor negotiations, and Microsoft's partnership with the AFL-CIO aims to separate the company from its industry rivals on the issue. The agreement was announced at an event in Washington, D.C., attended by labor leaders and Microsoft executives. According to a report by the Government Accountability Office, federal agencies in the United States have over 1,200 planned or operational uses of AI. While some agencies have invested significantly in AI, others have struggled to meet federal requirements. The report emphasizes the need for responsible AI management to minimize risks and achieve intended outcomes. The survey of 23 non-defense agencies revealed 1,241 current and planned AI use cases, with NASA and the Department of Commerce leading in the number of use cases. However, the report also highlighted challenges in defining AI and incomplete data submission by agencies. Recommendations were made to various agencies to implement AI requirements and update AI use case inventories fully. According to a survey by Intel, only 10% of organizations have adopted generative AI technology in production environments despite a surge in awareness. Difficulties with basic infrastructure, compliance and privacy, reliability, high cost of implementation, and a lack of technical skills were cited as barriers. However, those who have invested in generative AI have seen benefits such as improved customer experience, increased efficiency, and enhanced product capabilities. And despite the low cost and barrier to entry, fewer than one in five Australian SMBs are utilizing AI. Australian small and mid-sized businesses need help to embrace it, with only 19% presently using AI and another 21% planning to adopt it in the near future. This leaves 60% unsure or unaware of AI as a business opportunity. Why do we care? We should ponder the haves and have-nots of technology, and with my focus on S&B, ensure that smaller customers are not left behind while large companies and government agencies surge ahead with gains. This gap between awareness and implementation could lead to a future surge in adoption as those barriers are addressed, although I would prefer customers to see gains now. 
60% of SMBs are either unsure or unaware of AI, which indicates a significant opportunity for growth and education in the sector. Addressing these knowledge gaps is the IT services opportunity. And what an interesting partnership. Microsoft taking a proactive approach to addressing labor concerns in the era of AI. By supporting unionization and collective bargaining, Microsoft acknowledges AI's transformative impact on the workforce, and they're investing in it. Let's talk a little fast food. McDonald's has partnered with Google Cloud to implement cloud-based analytics and AI solutions across its restaurants. The multi-year partnership will involve deploying Google distributed cloud computing and storage to individual restaurants, allowing for sharper tools, smarter models, and improved overall experience for customers and crew. McDonald's aims to open 50,000 new restaurants, expand its loyalty program, and have 30% of delivery orders originate from its mobile app by 2027. Presto Automation, an artificial intelligence-powered drive through company, relies on off-site human workers in the Philippines to complete over 70% of orders despite marketing itself as a labor automation technology provider. The pattern of AI companies using contractors in countries with lower labor rates is not uncommon, with many disguising human labor as AI. The restaurant industry's experiments with AI have raised concerns about job replacement, but in this case, labor is being outsourced rather than replaced by AI. And new research from Stanford University suggests that fears of increased cheating in high schools due to AI chatbots like ChatGPT were overblown. The study found that introducing chatbots did not significantly impact overall cheating rates. While some students use chatbots for generating ideas or editing papers, most teens surveyed had little to no knowledge of ChatGPT. The research highlights the need to shift the focus from cheating fears to helping students understand and critically engage with AI tools. Why do we care? We're coming down from the peak of inflated expectations on the hype cycle, and a lot of the fear is proving to be misplaced. Replace all workers at the drive through students never write papers again? Not today. Instead, practical implementations. Fast food is a great example. It's less about replacing workers and more about analytics. By integrating Google's advanced cloud and AI technologies, McDonald's is positioning itself to improve operational efficiency and personalize customer interactions. Do more of that. Well, we learned a bit about why the OpenAI board moved on Sam Altman. Per reporting in the Washington Post, senior employees at OpenAI raised concerns about CEO Sam Altman's alleged psychologically abusive behavior, leading to the board's decision to fire him. The complaints included creating chaos, pitting employees against each other, and lying to the board. Altman was reinstated after employees threatened mass resignations, but the company now faces challenges in rebuilding the board and maintaining unity. An internal investigation is planned, and Altman's departure could have jeopardized the company's investments. A widening AI skills gap leads IT leaders to prioritize staff training to address AI-related skills deficiencies. Two-thirds of IT decision makers reported dealing with skills gaps in their teams, prompting a shift in attitudes towards training. AI and machine learning were identified as top focus areas, but 43% rated their team's skills as low. Hiring qualified staff in AI and ML systems was reported as a challenge, and organizations are urged to build AI-related skills to avoid falling behind proactively. Why do we care? I paired to because it's ultimately about staffing. Sure, we care to understand what happened to Altman for open AI stability. But in our push for AI, I'm advocating speed with care. I do not believe in moving as fast as possible and instead considering adverse outcomes and offsetting them as you consider action. The adage of measure twice, cut once is classic advice for a reason. MSP360 has introduced a new feature called Online Access 2.0 in its managed backup online solution. This feature allows end users to navigate and restore backups independently, reducing the need for IT support tickets. The aim is to free up MSPs to focus on cybersecurity strategies and critical functions 
while enhancing the end user experience. Why do we care? I almost missed the self-service headline here. Enabling self-service for IT is compelling. How much more of your offering can you make self-service? Like listening to the business of tech? Please make sure to hit that like button and follow or subscribe. It's the best way to support the show and it's free and easy. If you want to join the business of tech community and support the show directly, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash MSP radio. You can get bonus episodes early access to our entire library of written stories, as well as opportunities for one-on-one -on -one consultations and advice and pay what you want. You pick the value of the show and give as you see fit. Thank you for your support. And don't forget to hit like, follow, and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Today, National Ice Cream Day, and apparently it's National Cream Cheese Frosting Day. That would make a good ice cream. Want to take my class in January? Navigating Emerging Technologies for MSPs, and the link is in the show notes. You got a question, a comment, or a thought? Put it in the comments if you're on YouTube, or reach out on LinkedIn if you're listening to the podcast. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. The Business of Tech is written and produced by me, Dave Sobel, under ethics guidelines, posted at businessof.tech. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like button and follow or subscribe. It's free and easy and the best way to support the show and help us grow. You can also check out our Patreon, where you can join the Business of Tech community at patreon.com slash MSP radio or buy our Why Do We Care merch at businessof.tech. Finally, if you're interested in advertising on the show, visit mspradio.com slash engage. Once again, thanks for listening to me. And I will talk to you again on our next episode of The Business of Tech. Part of the MSP Radio Network.